Hi, I'm Brett Kinsella. I'm founder of VoiceBot.ai. I'm excited to be here at Voice Global with two real innovators in the voice AI technology and audio space. We have Audio Burst and we have Bragi today and a couple of companies that I think a lot of you are familiar with, but you might not be familiar with what they're doing today and how they fit into some of the larger trends that are going on. So I think a lot of people would consider the last decade is the mobile era in technology. And I think it's fair to say that the last five years, however, have been the audio decade or the first half of the audio decade. We'll call it the beginning of the audio era. You know, there's been a rise in streaming music, podcasts, and now hearables, the smart wireless headphones and earbuds. They've ushered in a new era of content consumption around audio, and it's really an audio renaissance from my perspective. Shipments of hearables in 2020 doubled from the previous year. Uh, they finally became must-have devices. And a lot of people were at home during the pandemic. They were on video calls, Zoom chats. They were uh, trying to deal with noise in the background, working from home for the same time and dealing with the cacophony that comes with daily life. And reliable hearables turned out to be the devices they absolutely had to have. They were essential all of a sudden. And that's the opposite of what most people thought because they thought people weren't going to be out and about. And that's what hearables were for. Therefore, when you're driving or when you're walking down the street. But no, actually in the home, a lot of people needed them just to do their daily work routine. And then all of a sudden they discovered the benefit of hearables and that's led to this explosion in use. And as we move back out into the world, we're gonna see more and more consumers are using them at home. They're gonna be using them out in the world. And that's led to distribution of the ability to drive the audio content to people at any time more than you've ever seen in the past. Now, in 2018, VoiceBot was able to identify about 78 million hearables users just in the US. By 2020, that was up to 95 million, and that was before Q4. So actually, I'm, I'm sure it's over 100 million now because the Q4 numbers were spectacular. So that's a lot of people just in the US, and what we find is a lot of the other markets are just a little bit behind the US in terms of adoption. So the important thing here is he, hearables have opened up audio distribution in a way that smartphone screens did for video and for social media. So what does that mean? So the next phase in development of this space, I believe is gonna be personalization. That's what we saw in the mobile era when we brought out mobile, video, social media, all sorts of visual personalization type of experiences. And that has been the dominant trend. So we, we think about two things. We think about convenience and we think about personalization. However, for the last 15 years, audio hasn't changed that much. It's really been broadcast oriented. It's been for the masses, generic. We haven't had personalization. So it seems to be a fitting way to kick off the second half of the audio era decade with two innovators from Audio Burst and Bragi to talk about what they're doing on this front. All right, so first I think I should bring up uh, Nick Veed, who is the CEO of Bragi, Nick. Well, thank you for, thank you for having me. Okay, so I think we should start off by you telling people a little bit about Bragi, what you're doing, and how the company's evolved over the last couple of years. Well, thank you very much. Um, I used to be the head of the center at Harman many years ago, it's about 10 years ago. And I was um, kind of stunned that we had visual computers, like our phones, but we didn't have audible computers. Um, the, the headphones that we're wearing, are using our one-way devices um, now capable of picking up my voice, but that's pretty much it. It's not a computer device. It's not a computing device for me. So I wanted to create a new kind of computer, and that computer had to interact with uh, like button presses, uh, gestures like nod shakes, um, or, or interacting with with what I was doing at a specific time. So it could identify whether I was walking or having a swim and adopting to that use case. And also, last but not least, um, having a voice interface to the, the device. So a, a, it's kind of like an, an audio Android uh, in very, very small and tiny that can fit onto a tiny headphone like this. So I came up with a, a headphone that had computing power, that had memory, that had storage, um, and had a lot of sensors inside, just our phones do too, to improve the user experience and reduce friction. So 
a party we needed to showcase a, a, a headphone, so it didn't exist. Um, and uh, we invented or uh, the true wireless headphone um, that was that didn't exist back in the day. We had to make true wireless mainly because the sensors had bad readings if it had cable on it. So if you had a cable, it would talk and and destroy the readings, so the embedded AI wouldn't function. Um, so what we've been building is is pretty much a prototype uh, and and showing off that prototype in a mass production one. We went on Kickstarter. It was the I think fifth largest Kickstarter back in the day with sixteen thousand supporters. But our intent was always to build the kind of like the audio version of Android. And uh, about two and a half years ago, we we sold the hardware, the physical business of products, and have emerged over to just making software and AI um, for audio computers. Um, for that, we have partnered with a range of, of, of companies, innovative companies such as, as AudioBurst. Um, but our business is really creating a device that adopts to my needs, that, that reduces friction while I interact, and gives me the content and the information I want at the time that I need it in the most convenient way. So the logical way that most people believe this market will develop is for companies like Bragi, who provide this technology to hearables providers to then have the core hardware and applications that are on the smartphone will actually fulfill the need of the user. Uh, but you've done a lot of development on this and you've come to a conclusion that we need specialized applications, maybe a marketplace of specialized applications because the, the mobile device ecosystem isn't going to take advantage of all the affordances that we're, we have now with these smart wireless earbuds. Well, also because it's a system, right? It's, it's a system between a headphone and some services. Um, those services can reside on the phone or in the cloud. But eventually, you will see headphones that have their own 5G connectivity and not requiring a phone as a relay device. So we've been communicating with, through audio for much longer than through writing and screens. And um, that will uh, come back. And we are making the infrastructure to enable that audio uh, communication path. Right. I don't think a lot of people have really anticipated this idea that we won't actually need the phones, that the, that the true wireless earbuds will actually be the computing device that we have with us. And so, as as we just discussed, then in that case, you don't have the applications on the phone. You have to have them on the device. And what did you need to do from a technology standpoint in order to be able to create enough room and to to actually place the technology or place the applications in such a small footprint? Well, first we need the right team. Um, uh, luckily, uh, uh, some of my friends had been working on the Comstack for the first iPhone back in the day, and they were, were based in Munich, where I am too, and they were excited to work on the, on the next thing. So they already worked on the first f first thing, which was, was, the, was the iPhone, the original iPhone. And uh, so a, a group of people joined me, and, and they, that was really the, 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 the basis for the communication for the application space and for the better computing. Um, on the sensoric side, we have immensely little space. Uh, like literally, we're computing in uh, hundreds of kilobytes of memory, um, and we're not talking about like like seven eight hundred. We're talking about maybe two three hundred kilobytes of memory. So the, the AI that we deploy to understand the sensorics has to be immensely efficient. Very short story, but the, the guy that started up our AI department uh, was researching in um, flies, you know, and fly brains, and he simulated fly brains and computers. And through that special processing of how flies process sensorial input, we created the same kind of methods in understanding sensorial input from headphones in a very small and constrained space. Awesome. So when we think about the hardware, hardware becomes distribution to deliver applications and services to people who are on the go. That's what digital platforms do. 
Uh, but then we need those applications and Audio Burst is one of your partners in this, one of the first applications uh, that you're going to be partnering with in order to bring into this, this new era of personalization from audio. I'd like to bring Amir Hirsch up to the stage and Amir, it's great to see you. Great to see you as well, Brett. So why don't you tell people just to set the table what Audio Burst is, and then we can get into how you're working with Bragi and, and how you see this playing out from a personalization standpoint. Sure, thank you. So Audio Burst is the world's audio search and delivery platform. We've built an AI engine that listens to talk audio, radio podcasts, now social audio, some online archives, and automatically segments them into short clips, search, sorry, short searchable clips that are fully indexed with a lot of metadata attached and associated with each clip like that. So afterwards, we can partner with companies such as Braggy, with mobile apps, with websites, with the automotive industry, pretty much anyone that has a consumer that is looking to get audio experiences and talk content to their users, to their consumers. And they can build on top of our APIs and SDKs in order to deliver search, personalized playlist, topical playlist alerts, and any other audio content-based offering and services. That's great. So I've heard Daniel Eck uh, talk a couple times about his assessment of the audio industry. And he looked at that compared to what he said with the visual industry. And he said, it looks like based on the economics of the two of, of the two industries that we value our eyes, or at least businesses value our eyes 10 times more than we value our ears. Uh, but is that because we've just focused on that and we haven't actually taken advantage of this real estate that we have in our ears that people want to be able to use more and more and that we're, and that, that, that could lead to a sort of an explosion in audio consumption and then audio content and use? Well, I want to say first we were wrong, okay? We valued, I think, our eyes more than we've done on our ears. Our uh, researches show that when we interact and even between two human beings or a crowd, or definitely a brand and their target audiences, that audio works way better than video, than visuals. And we should invest and place more and more of our budgets and of our activity and of our technology into the auditory world. And I'm happy to see that in 2020, 2021, definitely we see that happening actually already. Um, in pretty much every aspect of where that comparison had shown preferences to video. I think at some point we got very happy to switch from text to video because it was faster, it stimulated us better than, or it grabbed our attention way better than textual interfaces did, but we completely overlooked the way we are usually communicating in talk and in audio. And we completely forgot about all the experiences that do not want the screen, that would like to be happening without the screen in front of us. And now these days, we can see through the popularity of podcasts, of social audio, even of digital radio, that people, especially after the pandemic here, want to turn into multitasking, to hearing their content, getting their news, their updates, their you know learning new uh, ideas, or just uh, updated on gossip or tech or business, doing it via audio because that doesn't stop their lives. So I think we're seeing the shift in tech investment and revenues and uh, even advertisement budgets moving more and more to treating the majority of our time during the day that we're not in front of a screen, that audio can complement and assist and relate to us without stopping our lives to do, in doing it. Uh, luckily for audio, but that's exactly what we do. <laughs> yes, yes. I think that's a really interesting insight. I haven't heard anyone characterize it that way before, where we were already looking at screens to consume text. And then they wanted to add images and video. So they just used the technology they already had. They had distribution of screens. They wanted to make the screens better, but they already had screens out there. So they're just going to use them in a different way. But at the same time, we did not have distribution of microphones and speakers on very many devices. And even the places where they were uh, resident, we didn't actually have very good quality speakers. And so this maybe will bring both, uh, both of you back up on stage here. 
this really does speak to the fact that we're in this very different type of era right now where we actually can fully take advantage of audio for the first time. True. Well, well, I, I don't think it's just audio. It's, it's, it's a, a process, right? We have a lot of uh, senses that, that, that we really value as, as humans, um, whether it's taste or like tasting like drinking wine or, or having someone touching you or, you know, giving a kiss. Um, the thing is, we, we have had exceptional growth in the visual space for a long time. Um, there's been been a lot of exploration, a great use experience de developed for visual, and now we're getting great use experience for audio, and it's supplementing each other. Eventually, we'll have great use experiences for taste, for for smells, for touch, for for all our senses, and it's just one of the paths. And now visuals filled up, um, growth is hard, growth is much much easier in audio, and if you combine the two you have a better, better central experience. When I met with Nick maybe two or three years ago, uh, I was very excited to hear about all his vision and passion about how do we make, I think at the time he was toying around with calling it a little bit almost like a, a voice OS or OS for voice devices. And to me, it showed the beginning of how do we expand from the laptops, mobile, this much like we've just discussed, the screens of the world that we're in right now into eyes-free, hands-free experiences with voice commands, with smaller computation, with now with you know 5G, we have even have connectivity without the mobile, but the whole interface promoted an interaction between human beings and their devices without the need to watch, to touch, to type, to simply pass a command and get the responses and get the answers that we want. So until I'll be able to deliver, you know, a good tasting cake to handle the taste, Audioverse has built the engine to deliver audio content to it. And that was why I got so excited about this partnership because for us, it showed the expansion into devices, into new areas, into new user journeys and new types of interactions with users where audio can deliver their response, where we're not limited to the mobile phone only, which is today the focus of Audioverse. Right now, our number one vertical is mobile apps and web apps that have a screen but want to add augmented reality by using our talk audio playlist to it. And that's where we're constantly focusing, but Bragi and the interactions that we're doing with the automotive industry and some other devices showed us the path of the next jump, the next generation to, again, going back to the hours that I'm not in front of my screen while I run, while I exercise, while I cook, while I just, you know, lay back in uh, my porch and don't want to stare at the screen again. I still want to hear about my stock portfolio or learn about biotech or cryptocurrency and get the latest updates over there. That I think connection works very well. And I think you're spot on there, right? We're looking back at a time 15, 20 years ago when we had newspapers, radio, you know, and, and the way that we consumed uh, information was absolutely not personal. Like the personalization was how fast I'm flipping through the newspaper, uh, the age of, of Nokia, um, of, 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 of having a single app that does everything. Like Snake was the only game you ever needed. <laughs> so it, it's a logical process. In the visual space, you have created personalization. You go to Google, you search for something, you're being presented with an outcome, you are being presented with advertisement, with things that you might like. And the same process will happen for audio, obviously. So rather than just having a snake, of, of course, people want to have more games, more services, more streaming services, more information. And they also want to have the information in story stuff, talk radio. They want to have the information that they really want to hear. I want to hear about Bayern Munich, but I'm not the only one that wants to hear about Bayern Munich, but it's it's very limited in the world population who wants to hear about Bayern Munich. Right. Someone wants to hear about Chelsea. Someone wants to hear about you know American football, um, which I don't particularly fancy because I just don't get it. Um, I think that's very mutual in the football, soccer, soccer football space anyways. Mm -hmm. but But having that personalized information just means that 
that it becomes much more useful to me. Um, and the, the same, same step from newspaper to personalized, customized information on my smartphone will happen from talk radio to audio person probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I look at, I look at uh, a couple of things you both said. I think just to hammer these points home, Nick, you talked about this idea that we've essentially spent our growth in visual. And I think people are feeling that. It's much harder to get more growth there, more activity, because we've done so much there. And that audio is a place where we can actually grow very quickly. So I think that's really important for a lot of people to understand. The other thing is we're here at Voice Global. A lot of people here are interested in voice technology, voice assistance. We've been talking about audio. And I think that the tie in here is fairly obvious. One is that the, uh, the most common response or the most aligned response to a spoken request is audio, right? And what we see is we see all these little snippets, these predetermined, deterministic responses you get from, from voice assistants. Some engineer or designer have created them, and that's great. And, and many of them have done a good job, but it doesn't actually lead to this idea of this dynamic personalization. The world is very dynamic. We have new content all the time. And this idea too that when we are when we had audio time, it's not that we haven't had this idea of of music or even talk radio when we were in the car. It's just it was broadcast and it was really viewed as entertainment as opposed to education, for example, or staying connected to a community. And with all of these these uh, micro segments, these this talk audio that now can be segmented, it's a completely different world. I think of it as it's sort of like Twitter coming to audio in some ways, hopefully without all the vitriol uh, of Twitter. But the one of the original ideas behind Twitter, or at least the, the way they described the success, was that it filled the in-between spaces in the day. And this is a time when maybe you don't have an hour to listen to a podcast, uh, or you, you can't sit down and watch a video, uh, but you're, 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 you've got a 20-minute run, or you're driving to the grocery store, or you're in the grocery store, which is when I listen to things like Audio Burst a lot, uh, that you know something like Audio Burst is a very different type of audio experience because it takes just what you want and just enough to get you started. And then you can decide whether you want to click in and listen to more, or if you want to just move on to the next thing in a series of personalized feed. Um, related, connected to things that you just mentioned, Brett. So, you mentioned the old radio days. At the time, there was only one, two, three frequencies available, FM around us that we can switch between. So it wasn't just the fact that it was streamed to us and we could listen or not, and it was in the control of the radio. Once we've moved, once audio moved to the digital space with podcasting, with the online version of radio, all of a sudden, we've got a tremendous amount of choice that we can choose content from, that we can right. connect with. And I think the audio creators and the users have lost themselves. They're finding difficulties finding one another, which goes back to the second point of personalization. So now instead of one channel broadcasting for all, we have millions of podcasts and audio rooms and re digital radio that is available regardless of the geographical location in which I'm in, which covers pretty much any topic that you want in a very high quality, highly produced, smart way, and not just a robot reading the first paragraph of a blog. On the other hand, we've got now accessibility to millions of users to be listening, to be looking for that content, right? either via mobile apps or through smart uh, earbuds, like uh, Braggy is now helping in uh, growing and promoting the ability to persons, to match them to one another, cannot operate on long form, cannot operate on just streaming. You have to take the, the content, cut it up into individual items, much like you know uh, iTunes have done to the LPs and broken it up to single MP3s and uh, songs. That's what Audibus does to the full shows, breaking up to individual items. And then every single user, wherever they are, through the smart connection to Audibus, can get that playlist, that personalization experience of the bits from multiple different sources that will answer those 20 minutes that you're in the grocery store. And whenever you hit something that is interesting and now it, you know you, you want to dive longer into it, 
it's that choice. You go into the long form and on the drive back, just listen to that podcast all the way to the end of it. But if you don't break it up to the short form, so those bursts of ours, and have the ability to grab your attention in those 20 minutes of audio, Twitter audio version for it, no one's going to do the investigation. It's going to be very difficult to find that content. That's the personalization when it comes to audio, uh, I think, in, in the way that we're operating today. Yeah, and I can tell it's really a technology story here because what Nick was talking about with true wireless earbuds, the reason they didn't exist before was because it's a hard project. It's a hard engineering project to make it work. And it's continuing to be hard because we want to put more features in there. We want to move them to being tetherless devices, no mobile device required uh, that they can connect to the internet directly. So that's going to continue to require a lot of innovation, innovators like both of you. And then on the content side, there just hasn't been a lot of uh, investment around this, and it's a hard problem. But essentially what we have is we have two essential AI companies, one dealing with the AI at the hardware layer to try to make these things work in a small footprint, and another at the content layer that is doing it. And both of these together hit those themes we talked about at the top, right? So what are the themes? Convenience. Audio is pretty convenient. Earbuds are really convenient. They can be with you all the time. Personalization. Also a hard problem, but obviously if you can actually take things, just like the smart homes personalized to us, the earbuds can be personalized to us even more. Uh, we see that with all sorts of different features on that and, that, and then the content as well. Uh, so when I look at this, it's it's like a AI feel-good story to me. Nick, are we allowed to mention some of your customers that you're going live with uh, this year? Who do we, uh, can we mention uh, some of them? So people know that, you know, this is the reality, not just the two of us, uh, you know, talking. <laughs> well, we, we can't talk too much about who it is because they would have to, to release that, but we can say very confidently that um, in white retail, you'll see products with Bargy OS on it. And we're expecting to have our partnership more than 3 million units this year, uh, just in the second half of this year. So, um, that's awesome. Congratulations. Well, let, let's wait and see what, what Corona okay. and everything like chip shortage uh, gives to us. But um, we've had a phenomenal year and uh, we're very much looking forward to launch this with our our launch partners. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously our launch partners are, are well-known brands um, that are also seeing an opportunity to transition away from being the, the, um, the person that or the, the company that, that is left behind and doesn't have the services, doesn't have the connectivity, doesn't have the usability, um, specifically when they go head to head to, to someone like Apple. Um, so so Bargain is really the choice of, of, of how to keep up or even overtake Apple in terms of capabilities and hopefully also use experience. I think Brett, that's Brett. That's another uh, uh, something that uh, Bragi and Audioverse see eye to eye in in making uh, the services and the capabilities very accessible to the users. We go to the users. We don't make them come to us. So in that combination, even in what Nick just mentioned, so with the Bragi technology selling to known brands to three million units, instead of trying to convince users to come and buy new devices is now turning existing earphones or earbuds into smarter, braggy operated ones. And it's the same way that Audioverse keeps saying, I don't want people to come to Audioverse to look for the content or to any of their sources. We're in charge of bringing the audio content to the users, you know, wherever they are, whatever device they're using. That, you know, removal of friction, I think is in the heart of both technologies of the, uh, voice operation and making it accessible to users and in finding the audio in a, in a simple voice command and not researching and working for it in order to be exposed to it. Awesome. <laughs> Nick, did you have a final comment there? I think we have an amazing future in front of us as consumers. Um, we're getting devices that become... Um, less in your face and in front of your face and much more dis discreet and disappearing. Um, things that don't fill up your empty space, but but enrich it. Um, and I, I hope to be, uh, be playing my small part of it. And 
obviously working with Audio Burst, uh, that's a great partnership where we can give delightful experiences to consumers. Outstanding. So I will say that this today marks the second, the first day of the second half of the audio decade. We haven't seen anything yet. It looks like not even close. We'll be yes. we'll be coming much much. We'll we'll be having a great great decade for sure. Trust Nick and I to deliver on that promise. <laughs> Outstanding. Outstanding. Thank you both, gentlemen. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, Nick.